Hey guys, uh, I wanted to show you, uh, I have a special reason that I'm putting this case back together uh, at this time, and uh, it's a good time to demonstrate one of the very few times that you apply heat to these, uh, this is part of the assembly procedure. There is a, a hex nut, well I wouldn't call it hex. The other side of the main pinion bearing, you know, this pinion bearing has got to be pressed in here. And we felt that, we felt that uh, nut come off pretty easy. And I just want to make sure that this is a pressed fit, that this case is good enough to, to use. What you do is you just sort of lightly heat it. I have some car cleaner on here. Be safe. Have your fire extinguisher handy. Okay, it just fell in. Did you see that? All right. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. So, there's another little item I thought I'd share with you. One of my very special top secret black ops never to be shared secrets some of you already see it don't you let's take you down uh, let's take you down a little closer here I got I'm gonna reset you up okay keep going here I just wanted to uh, check my inspection plug here. Oh, interesting. You see what I see? Hmm. That is the adjusting nut for first gear shifting fork. And. I'm kind of at a loss for words. This is the plug that came out of this hole. I just made this hole. I'm doing this all in the reverse order. Maybe I'll put the, the fun stuff at the end. This is a uh, three-quarter inch electrical uh, <laughs> outdoor plug for uh, electrical box. And the idea is to uh, put a little bit of uh, RTV on there at your final assembly and uh, now you can see oh there you go take a look around there there's a little flange on there Alright, and uh, that works real good. I'm real happy with that. Now, when you attempt to do this, you're gonna, <laughs> this is gonna, this is gonna <laughs> cause a little controversy, I'm sure. Everybody's gonna tell you never ever ever do this and uh, <clears throat> it this happened uh, kind of by necessity uh, many many years ago you don't wanna it, remove any of the webbing and I'm only gonna do this to first and second gear this was not on a race car this is not going into a race car uh, it was on my sand rail and uh, was, a friend of mine was having trouble with his and I'm not going to mention any names but it was uh, he bought this transmission from a very one of the top engine transmission builders of the time and uh, we got out to the sand dunes and he had trouble with it staying in the gear and uh, next thing I know 
he comes back jumping up and down smiling from ear to ear and uh, he says I fixed my problem and I went over and I saw this hole in the <laughs> transmission and I said what the hell did you just do and he says well there's some guys over here and they told me that they'd done this before and uh, I let them do it it was either that or pack up and go home uh, and I never met those guys I never saw what they did or how they did it and by the time I saw it he had a, a bunch of uh, shoe goo and a piece of a pop can glued over the whole section here had it all filled up with pookie and uh, he was gonna try it out and he ran all that week and he ran real hard and he didn't have any more problems so the next time I built the transmission I decided that by golly I'm gonna make myself a provision to get in there just in case I needed it and I ran it very hard uh, it's still in service today and uh, I'm gonna post up a picture of that sand rail it's down in uh, Yuma Arizona great I thought you'd like to see that and uh, it's something that I've done I don't recommend that you do it, it works for me and uh, you don't have to do it there was talk you know about transmission jigs I still use my transmission jig though I still use my transmission jig and I try to get it set up and I will drive it. Uh, I wanted to put this together. I wanted to see where that, make sure that it all lined up. I had uh, talked to my friend on the phone in California and he's kind of computer illiterate, I guess, and his wife had the phone so he went ahead and, and waited. His wife was gone so on a trip so she got back and she took a picture of it and I'll post that up show it to you and uh, anyhow I'm babbling I guess I'll have to edit this all down but this has kind of been a hurdle that I needed to get over and I have a lot of reservations about posting it up but I don't care it, it works for me and uh, it's something you can try if you want if it doesn't work out for you don't blame me Okay, I'm going to talk kind of fast here. I'm doing this in a strange way. Uh, it might seem strange, but this is the best I got to work with at the time. So, uh, this is my old sand rail. I sold it to one of my best friends uh, about seven years ago. And uh, this is what it looks like today. It's still functioning. It's still in operation. His wife took this picture I think a day or two ago and uh, she emailed it to me and uh, there's a couple things that I I want to point out here if I can okay obviously there is my plug that I did oh gosh 15 20, back in the early 90s and uh, you'll look over here this is the passenger side of the transmission you'll see a heavy-duty side cover on this side as well as the other side then these are some uh, Berg reinforcing plates that you add to give you additional strength and you'll note here that there's no frame horns there's nothing underneath this transmission that you'd normally see on a car and it's because I decided to cut them off uh, to save weight uh, this buggy was uh, supported by a three bolt nose cone in the front and uh, I believe in this picture it's cracked and that's why there's that pan underneath it and it's uh, got a, a drip of oil and uh, that would happen from time to time because you know you have to when you compromise things uh, these are the kinds of things you have to deal with and I chose to cut those frame horns off and use a uh, mid-engine hang plate uh, that goes from the bell housing bolts. Okay, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane here. This was uh, the sand rail that uh, I started. Uh, well, this was the last sand rail I had. This, I was going to get out of it. I had sold the previous one and got my money out of it. And uh, this, this deal came along here. It was a four-seater 
and it had been rolled and I believe this uh, picture was after I had straightened the frame the uh, it was smacked down in the front and uh, I didn't want a four seater so uh, I started doing a little modifying and uh, this was the uh, the joy toy that I ended up with here and this, these are the kinds of things that we did with our uh, sand rails uh, and these were the reasons why we had to build the real heavy-duty transmission we use racing parts a lot stronger than stock and uh, let me uh, here's a here's a picture of it in the garage and it gives gives you it shows a few things it shows my the rear setup this whole machine weighed about 900 pounds ready to roll with gas and uh, you can see that there's no frame horns underneath the transmission I cut those off to save weight and there was a hang plate that attached right up here that I had to take off in order to uh, remove the engine uh, which is sitting over here to the side and uh, I ran a dry sump oil system with an external oil cooler here and uh, I had my own shock set up with these lightweight aluminum hubs and and disc brakes and uh, it was a kick butt little buggy I'll tell you and it, it uh, we used to run them hard we ran them till we broke them and you know even though we weren't racing it was it was a lot of fun so uh, here's a picture of that race tranny as I'm going to refer to it in um, the uh, tranny jig and this was in 2005 I'm not sure why I had it apart but I was doing a modification to it and if you you can see here on the uh, first second shaft it uh, this was a aftermarket racing gears for uh, first second third and fourth I ran a uh, uh, 310 first 235 second and uh, that that was a very pricey item uh, there's a picture of me and uh, these are some of the dunes that we used to run this is an this is uh, I'll just go through this kind of quick but it just shows you the environment and the abuse that we were putting these machines through and that was the four-seater buggy after I finished with it and uh, you can see we would go around these dunes in third gear average speed about 30 35 miles an hour and that doesn't sound like much but when you've got the wheels right there in front of you and just expanded metal under your feet you come flying over the, one of these ridges and these are buggy busters we used to call these witches eye uh, and this was uh, right by uh, I think this was over by I think it was just a little pretty close to Dead Horse Bowl. We had little names for all these different places. Here's another shot of it. You come flying over that ridge and hit one of these babies. I kid you not. It's it's going to shock everything. It'll shock the tranny, the engine. Uh, and I tried to get artistic. Didn't have a, a video camera back in those days, but uh, I tried to do what I could. And here you can see the, uh, the that was a. Uh, a 2276 at eight and a half to one compression, uh, dry sump oil system, external oil cooler, uh, dual 44 IDF Weber carbs. Uh, I think that was an inch and five eighths exhaust, and uh, those are comp cut paddle tires. You can see the tread between the paddles. That uh, uh, did everything I could to save weight, cut off the excessive rubber, and. Uh, I'll just kind of whip through here. This is uh, by Thunder Mountain, it looks like. There used to be a campground back there in the trees, and these kids used to come out there, and they would go flying over these hills on their motorcycles. Just incredible, fearless kids. It was just awesome. Uh, that's just my my crash helmet <laughs> sitting on top of the frame of the buggy, and somebody's lean sitting on their buggy next to it. It looks kind of strange there, but I did wear a crash helmet, and... Uh, tried to be a little bit safe uh, there's just uh, there's a nice shot of the buggy I used to run my cutter brake on the driver's side on the left side so that I could run my uh, I'd hang my arm over the rail and when I was uh, I could operate the the, the cutter brake 
and you just you get used to it uh, you can see the lightweight aluminum wheels these things weighed nothing uh, <laughs> what a fun machine uh, this is hard for me to look at this so Here's a shot. Yeah. <laughs>